Okay, so let's go from the eye now, work our way across to the beak. So another really catchy area. And one thing I've learned over the last couple of years of pastel work is that when you want an area to be quite light, bright, don't go muddying the underlayer up too much. You want, want something nice and light and bright. Get the lights in there first. I'm not putting much pastel down. It may look like I'm putting quite a lot down, but I'm not. Could be using sticks. You see, even when I'm rubbing it in, there's not much pastel on that surface. Could have used sticks. I could have used pan pastels or soft, um, soft pastels. But I wanted to just carry on with pencils. I've got them handy and it's not a large area I'm working on. And I'm using pencils as well, just to put in the indication of the blue around the beak. I'm doing that specifically so that it can help me with my color choices for the beak. Otherwise, I haven't got a reference of the background on the drawing at all. And it's going to be really important on this one is the blue really increases the vibrant look of the whole drawing so I want that right. You see in lots of my pastels and even when I do my oils I'll put a little edge like this in place on that blue just for that very reason just to show me you know something that I can judge against otherwise you can do the whole bird and you put the background in and you think, oh, hang on, <laughs> I've gone wrong all the way through because I didn't have that blue there to judge uh, my other colours against. Even just a little bit like this. I could put the whole blue in if I wanted to, but you can imagine how that's going to get dirtied and muddied if I get some pastel around and I ended up blowing a bit of pastel on there or smudging it with my hand, hence the small strip rather than colouring the whole of the background in. So I've got my light tone in place and now I'm darkening that down. My drawing's going to be more punchy and vibrant compared to that reference photo. I did it deliberately on my uh, printout. I increased the saturation slightly. I increased the vibrancy as well. I increased the brightness too. I wanted it to be even richer, even punchier. I think I'll work on this darker edge now. So we've got some blues in there, some greys, some blacks. You can see how even with just the eye and the beak already I'm starting to get loads of colours, pencils. I've actually got about 20 or more on my desk at the moment. And you can see how quickly and frequently I'm changing colours as well. So we've got a lovely dark edge there. That's really making that sharp point of the beak a centre of interest. It's just got to be when you've got such uh, darks against light backgrounds like that. Now I'm bringing some of a, more of a vibrant blue. I'm not afraid of putting in a punchy blue like that. I know I can come in with a bit of black on top and um, that'll subdue it. I can come in with some greys as well. And as I said, mine is going to be more punchy, more colourful, but hopefully still just as realistic. So you see, coming in with a grey, bringing that up on the beak, coming up towards the lighter colours, the lighter tones. I'm not thinking about details in the slightest at this stage. Yeah, 
now switch to a different gray that's more of a, a middle tone so that's where this darker one meets the light quick blend with my finger blend those together Just make some nice and smooth back in with the blue light touch lighter the touch means more of the layers we can get to sit on top so we build it up gradually rather than just going for it in one one fail swoop bringing some of that blue upwards more of a blend just for my finger and then change in back to that outline blue I'm gonna put a bit more of that in place now I'll go over this with a soft pastel um, later on so I'm not critical about that color but as you can see with the reference photo below, it's very close to that. Just float in, gentle, gentle, bit of this green over that lighter tone. It's very light yellowy green. I can grey it down later on. This paper will still take a lot of layers. A bit of a blend, clean finger. And that's greyed that down slightly. So even in this small light colored area, you can see I've used quite a few different pencils. Some of them so lightly, it barely touches the surface and just deposits the smallest hint of the color on the surface. Okay, so let's start working on this really vibrant yellow. It really tells the story of how much bright, strong, I'd say midday sunlight is in the scene, is above the Harris Hawk. So I've gone in straight away with my vibrant, bright yellow. If I put something dark down under there, dark orange or something, I'd struggle a bit to get the vibrant yellow on top. It's easier to dull a colour down than to try and brighten it up. And 
Now Geoconda pastel pencils, their range is softer, but they do have lots of these vibrant bright colours. I don't use them much for detail because they're soft, they're more difficult to sharpen and they tend to uh, be a bit more powdery, they could break a bit more as well. So I don't use them for the detail aspects but if you're doing a lot of flowers, vibrant flowers or insects or areas like this even, they are a um, really useful set to have and they're quite inexpensive in the UK anyway. Now this is a dark colour, lots of people would go in with black but it's not black, it's actually a, a very deep colour red. Just because that light is so bright, obviously in different light conditions, different lighting conditions, it possibly would be black in this uh, very recessed area. And you can see once again how many different colours I'm using. Some just need to be for a little dot of the colour but I can see it in the reference. I know what I want to create so that's why I end up with virtually all my pastel pencils set out uh, after each drawing. Now keep in mind as well when you're doing your subject, you could be doing this, you could be doing a Harris Hawk photo you took yourself. The colours on the bird would completely change if it's in a different light setting. Perhaps you're on a cloudy, a cloudy day with a, a green field, it's standing on the grass, you're going to get all different colours bouncing, different light bouncing around creating different colours. That's another reason why I don't give out colour formulas. I don't want you to just copy my drawings and try and get as accurate as possible to my drawings. Like I say really copy like paint by numbers if I told you every pencil change I used which would be virtually impossible. You've seen how many I've used already and then you can show your friends or family members wow look what I've done. That's really not a uh, drawing at all that's paint by numbers or drawing by numbers. So that's why it's up to you guys to really concentrate looking at the reference photo trying to match that colour up. The longer you've been doing drawing, painting and looking at reference photos like that the more colours and the more you'll be able to see the smaller colour changes yourself. So you can't push and force that to happen. It's, it happens automatically when you're more experienced.
Now, as I mentioned earlier on, there's a section on the bottom part uh, of the beak on this section here that's really a vibrant colour. And by getting that just right, I think it'll lift the drawing. You can see how you could easily be um, off on your colours. You wouldn't necessarily expect to see a colour so vibrant on this bottom edge. But by getting it in place, as I said, it really lifts lifts the whole drawing. It really st puts a stamp on the fact that it is very bright, extreme light, causing all this um, light to bounce around and causing this vibrant colour. The paper you're seeing on top of the drawing, that's glassine paper. I'm just using that to protect the eye so that I don't go putting my hand on it and, and smudging it by accident. Now we just put a few of the lighter tones on top, nice sharp pencil, I'll come back, I'll detail all this and the beak, that's just the basic um, tones and colours on there at the moment, no details as such in there at all. And I'll do a lot more refinement later on, but I don't like to finish an area off completely. I like to get now, I'll move from here and I'll start to um, get to the same level on all of the rest of the areas. So the obvious place to work on now is to join this darker area around the eye up to the beak and that'll be that whole section you know probably 70% done there still got the refinement to do but at least that will all be blocked in then I can start to concentrate on the um, feathers all those browns so what I'll do then I'll get my container and these pencils that I've used I'll get those same colours I'll keep those colours and I'll put them in a in a plastic container or wood container, push them out to the side so I won't be using those vibrant colours on the feathers, but I'll know which ones I've used when I come back to the refinement stage. At the moment, just glazing in a bit of green. It's quite a lot of green in this um, darker recesses of the eyes, going over there then with some browns to get a closer match to the colour I'm having, I'm uh, after. So you see, blend it together and then I've got a bit of a greeny brown in there. The important part is the tones in this area, you know, the darkness. Now switching back to my vibrant yellows, block in the, this joining area in, then I can do the other corner of the beak. So I use the yellows and the orange pencils again, layering them to create that, you know, that tone that I want, that color that I want, that yellowy orange. Even in my set of a couple of hundred pencils, you know, there's never going to be the instances where you get in the exact colours all the time. Sometimes you've got to adjust them slightly by putting one colour over another. I just let quite a lot of the video just go in real time now. There's not a lot to say. Um, 
as far as voiceover, you see exactly how I'm finishing off the rest of this beak. Just wanted to quickly mention my Patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction. It's packed full of pastel videos, oil videos as well, and those videos are being added to new ones every single month. I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies. And I take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details. You see everything I do, how I create my work. But it's not just for beginners, it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well. And this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details, tips and techniques. And as mentioned, I've got lots of oil videos on there too, so there really is something for everybody. And you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just $4. Now over a thousand members strong, hope to see you there soon.
So just a few touches in here, light pencil. This is not really the detailing yet, just just putting the suggestions in there so I, I'll know when I come back to do the detailing um, finally in the end parts. So as you can see, really light touch. You can still see that darker underlayer in there. It's more texturizing than anything. So I'm being careful here to keep the shape. It's critical I get that shape just right. I don't want any uh, mishaps using that glassine paper again, protecting the other areas. Keeping my hand up. 
Hi, just so that I can try to stay out of the way of the uh, camera fuel. Now more of that punchy orange and really vibrant colour on this bottom. And you see how that's really almost glowing with colour. And as I put the rest of the um, base of the beak down in and coming down towards the neck, that'll obviously look a lot more uh, realistic because it'll be in its place. then sharp pencil to put that bright line on top that's where the light is catching it I'll come back on top of that then with uh, some yellows as well And I think that's starting to look quite realistic. Happy with that for the first couple of layers. So now I can just carry on now. A little bit of refinement, work on that beak there in the lower section. And I'll uh, just speed that up a bit again so you can see that develop a bit quicker. Now of course the beak needs all those details put on there, I've got the base colour but there's also textures to the skin so I'm coming in with this very punchy yellow just putting in really uh, small circles so that's giving that that texture that feeling there that we've got uh, bobbly skin there almost like a chicken's leg so I'm not covering the whole area at all. Making sure that glassine paper is not moving. Now I don't want to go smudging the eye if I can help it. 
So some of these areas need to be a bit darker. And I'll put those darker areas in before I can get those lights on top. Once again, it's not going everywhere. Just here and there. And now coming back in then with the lighter yellow. This one's a little bit warmer. And you can see the dark haze on the reference, I'll put those in right at the very end. Obviously they're on top, sitting on top of this uh, flesh area, so they need to go on last. And as per my usual technique, you can see I'm going lighter and lighter. A few more of these punchy yellow areas, then I come in with my light lights on top. Now the Caran d'Ache, which is this type of pencil, is softer, as I've mentioned before. That means that we can get a more vibrant light on top. So I've got just a couple. I've got a white and I've got this creamy colour, I think, in the Caran d'Ache. I don't use them often, as I also mentioned. But if you want something very punchy, they're a real good addition to your set. So as I bring the video to a close, hope you've enjoyed it. Something a little bit different again. Really tricky feathers, but don't get overwhelmed by it. As I said earlier on, use the techniques to do a subject that you want to do. If you want to work um, on something less intimidating, you know, do that. As I said, perhaps a garden bird, something a bit smaller, or just do smaller areas but for, remember with pastels if you go too small actually of the physical size of it so if you shrunk this head down to a4 you're really going to struggle to get details like this we can only sharpen pastel pencils so much so that's why i generally work a bit larger with them so as i said hope you've enjoyed it and i'll finish off by putting up uh, a reference a photo of the finished drawing and I'll see you all again on the next video.